Okay, let's talk about using the AnyLink on the Spectrum radios with the Fly Zone planes. And in this case, I'm going to be using a DX8 and a DX6i because these two radios cover the two types of cables that can be used with the Spectrum radios. So here's what comes in the AnyLink box. You get the manual which has this little chart of, for compatibility with different radios. And you get the AnyLink. And you get some Velcro strips to stick the AnyLink on the back of your radio. And you get two cables. One is for a Spectrum radio, certain ones and one is for certain Futaba radios and I'll go over those in a minute. Although the AnyLink only comes with two cables you can see from this chart that there are four other ones that you can order and they work for various radios but I'm just gonna go over all of the cables that uh, are available at this point. So I'm on this website here SMC and we're looking at the first cable which is a uh, an O1 type cable. You can see right here from the description. It's the Futaba Square SMCRE TACM0001. I'm just going to go by the last number there. This is the number one. And that goes for some of the Futaba radios. And then we got the next one, which comes in the box with the AnyLink. It's one of the two that comes in the box. And this works with the Spectrum DX6, DX6i, DX7 and it's a number two. Then the next one which does not come in the box is the uh, Futaba high-tech round type cable and it's the number three. The next one is the uh, high-tech Aurora and it's a number four. And the last one, which is of particular interest for this video, is the one that works for the DX4E, DX5E, DX7S, DX8, and DX10T Spectrum radios, and it's the number 5. This does not come in the box, unfortunately. But the difference with this one is it has a battery on it. These radios don't have any power coming out of their power port where the charger plugs in. So you have to have external power to the AnyLink using this battery which has to be recharged now and then. Now as we saw in the box we got two cables. One is for the Futaba radios which does us no good for the Spectrum radios at all. So I'll put that aside. The other one is this cable and that works with the Spectrum DX6i right here, but it also works for the DX6 and the DX7. So the question is, what do we do about the other radios, like the DX8? So let's take the DX8 here. And we need another cable for that one. Now you can order one. It says on here that it's the, uh, the number five cable. So you could order that or you could make one. Now you probably thought when they said you could make one that you'd probably have to do a lot of soldering and get a lot of parts and it'd be a lot of trouble. But there is a way around that. You can use one of these splitter cables that's often used for uh, aileron channels and other things and uh, I'd recommend getting a Futaba that has the keyed type connector. I don't have that with me right now but I can use an ordinary one too. Just have to watch out I get my wiring right. Now the first thing we do is just take the cable that came for the DX6i and 
plug that into the splitter cable right here and it's good if you could put a notch in the cable I, I went ahead and put a little notch in there so I knew which way it went in all the time but basically that's it right there the little key that's on this any link cable this needs to go to the light color wire which is the uh, signal wire so like that then the next thing you do is you can plug the other end into the any link again you want to make sure that this light colored wire goes to the outside here if you don't have the key. If you have a Futaba cable it'll key up just fine but just make sure that lighter colored wire is towards the outside here down at the bottom. Alright, so that's all you gotta do there. Next thing is plug it into the radio. You'll hear the radio come on. Then, just take a battery pack. You can probably get one at Radio Shack, and I've got a little uh, servo wire on there. Okay, you might have to do some soldering there. Just put a servo wire on it, where the red wire is the voltage and the brown wire is the ground. And plug that into the corresponding uh, brown and red here. and you should hear the beeps from the AnyLink and now the light is on and that's all there is to it you don't use this other end which normally went in the uh, side of the radio or on the bottom it goes into the uh, charger port for the radios but the thing about the DX8 and also the DX4E, DX5E and DX7S and DX10T is that there's no voltage coming from this power or charger port so since there's no voltage coming from there there's nothing to power the any link and that's why you need a battery pack and it's just that simple now if you are the building type and you want to build a cable yourself all you need to do really is solder a trainer port jack onto a Futaba extension wire it's a servo extension wire right here and you come out with something like this and that just works the same way plug the trainer port jack into the back of the radio radio comes on plug the Futaba connector into the AnyLink and then plug the battery pack into the other end of the Futaba extension. And there you got it. It's on. And remember you need the the mapping that has the two beeps for the Spectrum radios. If it only has one one beep then you need to remap the AnyLink. And uh, you can do that by just unplugging the power, holding the stick for the uh, throttle or rudder, I guess we would be the rudder right now, I'm pulling the rudder over and holding it in the bottom left position and then plugging this back in and you'll hear three short beeps okay then you can just let go of the stick unplug it and now it's in the alternate mapping but of course this alternate mapping, there's two mappings and this alternate one won't work for Spectrum Radio so it has one beep. So to go back to the right one and I think this one beep mapping is the one that comes default on the AnyLink and so if you're using Spectrum you will have to remap it. So just repeat the process. Hold the rudder stick over and plug in the power again. Wait for the three beeps. Okay, let go of the stick. Now you hear two beeps because it's got the right mapping. Unplug the power, you're done. 
Now let's cover the other spectrum radios that work like the DX6i and they use the cable that came in the box with the AnyLink so it's a lot simpler. All you got to do is make sure the radio is always off before you start any of this and keep it off. Then just plug the jack in the trainer port. Radio comes on. You can plug the other end in the AnyLink if you haven't already done so. You can do it ahead of time. Just make sure the key is in there right. There we go. And now we don't need a battery for this one because we can get power off the, uh, tra the uh, charger port on these type of radios. And when I say these type of radios, I'm talking about uh, the DX6, DX6i, and DX7. The other ones required the battery pack. Okay, there we go. Now it's on, and you heard the two beeps, so I don't have to do the alternate mapping. It's already set up. Now let's say you bought a plane, like this Newport 17 that I just got, and it came with a free ending link. So what settings do we need to do on the radio? Well, the first thing we need to do is come in and we'll set up a model. So let's just say we start with a fresh model and we'll go down to Acro model 19. Acro just means it's an airplane. We don't want a helicopter. So we'll go into Acro 19 here and select that one. And there we go. Now at this point we should be able to just hook up the AnyLink and see if we get a response from the plane. I've turned the radio off now that I've got a model selected and I'm going to plug the AnyLink trainer port jack into the trainer port. And the radio comes on. And as you can see it's on the model that I've made, number 19, which I haven't named it yet. It's still Acro, but it's an airplane. Alright, next thing we do is power up the AnyLink. There, two beeps. Okay, now this jack here we're not using because, uh, like I said, there's no power coming from the charger port on a DX8. Okay, next thing to do, to link up the plane, there's no binding process on these fly zone planes like this Newport 17. All you do is just plug in the battery to establish the link. Now when you first plug in the battery the, the motor will beep and the prop will turn one time. And the next thing you have to do is move the stick, the throttle stick, up and you should get another one beep and then move it down and you should get two beeps or two spins of the prop. Now the motor's armed and the throttle should work. Now if we came along with another plane, say we had a DR1 and uh, I unplugged the battery from this one and plugged in the battery for the DR1 then it would link up without doing anything else with the radio. So you can switch planes really easy. Okay, now the first thing I want to note was even though we have the right mapping on these three channel, oh, three channel planes you would like the rudder to be over here but it isn't. It's on the rudder stick. You'll also notice that, guess what, the rudder's going the wrong way. So that's going to require moving the rudder over to the aileron stick with uh, the radio settings and we'll get into that when we uh, go in there and and uh, do some mixing and the other thing is the elevator works fine there's no need to change the elevator okay let's do the mixing to move the rudder over to the aileron stick so we're going to go into mixing right here 
and the default mode is aileron rudder which is just fine unless you have the flap set in the uh, wing type and then you'll probably have to toggle over to this uh, set the right to 100% that's plus 100% left is plus 100% and switch set that to on okay now the rudder is over on the aileron stick but the rudder stick is still functional so we want to turn that off so same thing again go to mixing and uh, go down here and change aileron rudder to mix one and then mix one set rudder to rudder then set both rates to minus a hundred percent offset should already be at zero just leave that at zero put the trim is activated so both trims will work both at the aileron and the rudder and of course the switch is on and that's it the plane should operate fine now just backing out and we'll shut the radio off and test it okay now that the mixing is done let's test the plane all right. Arming the motor. All right. Throttle works. The throttle is working. Now let's check the controls. There's the rudder. And there's the aileron. And as you can see, the rudder stick no longer works. That's disabled. The rudder's over here on the aileron. Looks like the rudder is still reversed. Okay, let's reverse the rudder. We'll go into the servo setup. Come down here and change travel to reverse. Change throttle to rudder. Come down here and reverse it. And then just back out, back to the main menu. Hmm, that's working. There we go. So rudder goes right and left like it should. Elevator is working fine. Throttle's working fine. Rudder stick is disabled. And we got the trims on both of them still working. So that's it. Looks good. I've wrote up some instructions on how to do all this, and I'll post that in the description of the video. That's uh, all for now, and uh, see you on the tube.